essentials. Oral hygiene is not all about having sparkling white teeth. There's that matter of making sure that your gums are healthy too. Today we'll talk more about the common gum diseases and what we can do to prevent or treat them. Joining us in this episode is Dr. Regina Santos Morales. She's a periodontist at the Asian Center for Periodontics and Implant Dentistry. Hello, Dr. Morales. Did I say your name correctly? Regina yes, yes, or Regina? Regina is fine. Okay, so but I'll call you Dr. Morales. Okay. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you know, you. it's so weird because people always think of dentists or orthodontists even because a lot of us do braces and retainers here, but periodontists you don't hear much of. Yes, um, unfortunately, um, gum diseases is not really looked at upon. Um, we are normally seen as the last one, but actually we are the foundation of whatever That's true, um, because treatment. you're the first line of defense. Yes, aren't actually, you? as I was mentioning to you, we are in like a house, we are actually the foundation underneath. You can't have a beautiful house if the foundation underneath are not properly well maintained. But what exactly is the realm of the periodontist? Um, Periodontology actually is the branch of or science of dentistry that deals with the supporting structures of your teeth. So basically, it's the bone that, that is actually um, externally supports the teeth, yes. and there are very small fibers that attaches the tooth to the bone. Okay. And then the gum is literally just a cover for it's the outside. skin. It's yes. the red so when you say gum disease, it's actually a layman's term yes. because that's what people see from outside. But what is really being deceased are the bone and the fibers inside that manifest through the gums. That's why you have complaints of, say, bleeding gums or swollen gums. It's actually coming from the bone and the knee. That sounds really serious. But first, let's talk about healthy gums. Now, what okay. do healthy gums really look like? For example, Meg Ryan and people like that, they seem to, I don't know if they have healthier gums or if they have less healthy gums because you see a lot of it when they smile. Does that have anything to do with it whatsoever? Um, um, basically, when you say you have healthy gums, it should look pale pink. Pale pink and is the right color. It should have a texture just like an orange peel, wherein you have those little dots Wow. Inside, um, outside and externally. This is news um, to me because I've never really gone to feel my gums, although I know it's not. It should strange. have no tenderness, a okay. palpation, it should okay. have bleeding, um, you, you shouldn't have any bad taste or bad smell around it. So basically, that's what real good gum should be. And when you eat ice cream, it shouldn't hurt. Well, yeah, but ice cream is more for the teeth. Remember, there's a tooth structure. So it, it, isn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the gums Yes, whatsoever. although when you have gum disease, when the tar starts to stick around the surfaces of your teeth, okay. then that's the time it can cause some sensitivity to the teeth as well. So it's the teeth that are actually getting sensitive. Yes, correct. So now we can go to the different gum diseases that are... The more mm -hmm. common one I know of, I've heard of, because I actually am not afraid to say it, I had it before, is <laughs> gingivitis. Yes. Is it very common? Yes, um, in fact, that's the initial stage of, of gum disease. Okay. And um, basically, the, the reason why you have it is if you if you don't go to the dentist regularly, let's say that every six months regimen, so that's that, a standard. That would require, yes. And if you've already had a history of gum disease, then we would recommend to come every three to four months in a year. But apart from not going to the dentist, I'm sure there are other causes of gingivitis. Oh, poor oral hygiene, okay. especially if you don't follow the, the strict regimen of brushing twice a day, flossing as often as you can, and sometimes people do rinse with, with some mouth rinses, you can do that. But the two basic important things for good proper oral hygiene is tooth brushing and flossing. But Doctora, flossing, how many times in a week, let's say, do you have to do it? Because oh, that, I don't think it's a practice that people do done all the time. at least once or twice a day. A day? What I always tell my patients is the fact that um, Every time you floss, let's say for those few times that you floss, right, you see these things coming out, correct? Mm -hmm. If you don't take it out for that particular day, who do you think will take it out? Back log, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no one will take it out for you, so it will just go on top and on top and on top of another, and then it gets harder, and that's the time that it attaches to the surface of the teeth, and then your gums are now starting to get hurt. And so with gingivitis, what happens? Is it that sort of that space in between? That yes, we always have a space between the teeth and the gums. Now that is usually measured by your dentist. Okay. And um, the normal number should only be about two to three millimeters, okay? That's the miniscule, um, yes. Correct, and that's supposedly where your toothbrushes and your flosses can clean for you. 
But if these spaces are occupied by deposits, tar, or calcular, you know, those black things around the teeth, yes. then they have a tendency to go deeper into the pocket. Okay. And once they go deeper into the pocket, they attract bacteria, and the bacteria will start to produce toxins that will start eating up the bone structures under. Then that's the time it will start to um, become more of a problem for you. And this gingivitis turns into periodontitis? Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe you can yes, explain what that is. That, that's exactly what I was telling you about. Those pockets become deeper, mm -hmm. and when they start to become deeper, they attract bacteria, and then they eat up the bone. And as I mentioned to you earlier, it's the bone that pretty, pretty much supports the teeth, nothing else, yes. and the fibers. Mm -hmm. And when they start to decrease in amount, then your teeth will start to move. Okay. Then that's another um, symptom of gum problems when your teeth starts moving, aside from the fact that when it's swollen and bleeding. Or if it's a milk tooth. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that's the only no. that's oh, gum disease, you're talking about. Gum no. disease rarely occurs um, um, to, with, with children. That's good. Very rare. The children would usually have um, cavities yes. as their main dental because of enemy. sugar or... More than, um, more than gum disease. Okay, so Which maybe more for adults. Periodontitis also has different levels, isn't it, Doctor? Well, yeah, you have the initial stages, which is the early, mm -hmm. and then the moderate, and the advanced. And when you're already in the advanced, then that's the time it becomes really scary because you may tend to lose your teeth if you don't seek for treatment. And what are some of the symptoms that we can do? People, can we, let's say, I smile and I say, okay, something is not right with the gums, or do we really have to go to, like, let's say, the dentist first and then they will suggest the periodontist. It would naturally be nice to, to visit a dental office and if you want even a periodontal office, you know, just to have that peace of mind that mm -hmm. you know nothing is wrong with your teeth and as long as you're doing the correct regimen, right. I think that should be fine. But okay, because periodontitis is something that you don't hear often. Gingivitis we've heard, we've seen in commercials, yes. it's a little more... I think the old term of periodontitis during our parents' days was like um, pyorrhea. If you ask them, that was the old term for that. Okay, and but what exactly, of course, it's all of the deposits, and what are the some of the symptoms of it, apart from having deposits? Um, I mentioned to you um, uh, bleeding gums, Yes. Um, pus coming out. Okay, because I'm trying to get the viewers to see that it, it is a serious problem, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. As I said, you tend to lose your teeth, and people have this idea that never mind, I'll just lose my teeth. But once you lose your teeth, then unfortunately the problem starts there yes. because you don't know how to restore it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, people don't, don't think that you have to replace it right away. And you have to replace because our teeth always are in constant motion. It's always moving. Okay. So once you lose a tooth, the other teeth starts to move around and then you get the um, imbalance of the teeth. That sounds like it's one problem after the next. Correct, correct. Are there any other um, problems coming from bad oral hygiene? You've already mentioned gingivitis and periodontitis.